And we are live all across Northwest and West Central Ohio on this Saturday night on WOSN. We're on the Thunderdome in Archibald. A couple of long-standing rivals set to do battle for the 87th time overall as the Archibald Blue Streaks entertain the Napoleon Wildcats. Hello again, everyone. Alongside my partner, Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts. Partner, we got a couple teams coming off tough losses in the league games on a Friday night, trying to right the ship, so to speak, as we head to the tournament here just a couple of weeks away. Well, where else would you rather be than right here, live basketball on a Saturday night in two teams re that really want to get some improvement before they hit tournament time. Sectionals right around the corner. I'm excited, and I get to do it with the mayor of Northwest Ohio himself, Randy Roberts. Hey, great to be here in Archibald where the Blue Streaks come in at 10 and 10. Napoleon at 8 and 11 for the streaks. Had a tough one last night as they fell to Wassey on an NWOAL play 65-42. So in that uh, rivalry where the uh, two teams meet non-league and league, Wassey on able to earn the season sweep this year. That bright spot for the uh, Archibald offense has been Cade Brenner. Did it again last night right at his average. He's 18.2 a game, had 19 in the contest last night against Wassey on. Yeah, Brenner and... Uh, Jaden Seiler really has carried this offense. Brenner averaging around 19. Early in the year, he was close to 20. But the problem has been the latest. You know, you're the guy that leads the bell cow as a scorer. Teams know that, right? So then they take away where you like to, to shoot. And, uh, and Coach Frank said one of the things they have to really be concerned with is him not getting frustrated because teams will take away his deep shot, try to make him drive and then hammer him. So you got to make sure that he gets good shots tonight. And we'll get into the lineups here in just a moment. But let's talk a little bit about Napoleon coming in on a three-game losing streak, none tougher than what they suffered last night in their uh, home court at the Grand Canyon, falling to Sylvania Southview 47-44 in a game that went back and forth throughout the night before Southview was able to uh, pull away and get the win. Yeah, it's kind of a puzzling team, right? Because you look at them on paper, you're like, whoa, they got great size. Hey, they got good guard play. Their numbers look good, but yet the record's not where you want it to be at 8-11. and They've kind of been a mixed bag for them this year, as you said, Three game losing streak, they need to get it right tonight. Well, suffered some, uh, in, well, had some injuries at the beginning of the year due to football, had some of their star players come in late. Looked like they had righted the ship right around the uh, Christmas break, where once their guys came in, won the uh, Henry County Tournament in convincing fashion over a Patrick Henry team that we uh, are going to see next week. But uh, since then, it's been, uh, like you said, kind of a mixed bag of results. Yes, lost seven of their last nine, so they need a win in the a biggest way, especially heading into the sectional play. You know, they have a little bit of a bye. They played a winner of Wapaw and Shawnee. And then, of course, if they win and Defiance wins, sets up that matchup from a year ago again in the tournament. So let's take a look at the uh, starting lineups. Let's start with the uh, Archibald Blue Streaks. Under head coach Joe Frank, you see Sonny Phillips. Kate Brenner, as we mentioned, kind of the uh, offensive star. Jaden Seiler, that guy's become the uh, number two scorer at uh, 11 points per game. And Stephen Diller, Chase Miller rounding up the starting lineup tonight. Yeah, Diller and Miller, they got to do a great job on the boards tonight because they are giving up a ton of size against this Napoleon front court. So Seiler, Diller, and Miller, that sounds like the law firm you don't <laughs> want to see when you're in court, right? <laughs> Only if you want a rebound, right? <laughs> I'll take a look at the Napoleon Wildcats, as we said, losing three in a row. Andrew Williams, uh, their leading scorer in the game last night with 15, their leading scorer on the year, and their top player has been Caden Cruz. He moved into that number one role. Blake Wolf missed the first uh, handful of games because of an injury at the end of football season, but Caden Cruz been a, a consistent bright spot for this team. 17 points, six rebounds, and three assists. Went for 14 in the tough loss last night. Well, here's the big problem for Archbold, though, right? Wrestler, 6'2", Wolf, 6'3". Williams, the smallest guy in the starting five at six foot. 6'5", six with Cruz, Cruz, and then 6'4", with Stoner. That is a lot of size against a very small Archbold team. Yeah, when you've got an Archbold team that uh, is going to go, uh, what, 5'10", 6'2", with Brenner, 6'2", 5'8", 5'10". Yeah, and, and there's not a lot of size on the bench. Biggest guy, Micah Nowsinger at 6'3", who's playing pretty well, but just a sophomore. That's the tallest guy that they're going to go against and try to match up with Napoleon size. One name we uh, didn't see in that uh, starting lineup is Trey Rubenstein, kind of been that uh, inside presence for the Wildcats this year. Is their top rebounder at seven a game, also contributes 
six points a night. We'll see what uh, he has to do with this Napoleon squad tonight. He is a super sophomore. He, his athleticism is off the charts. You'll see him, he'll probably be the sixth man tonight, but he can jump out of the gym. He's a fun player to watch. So as we said, Napoleon coming in on a three game losing streak, all three coming in the Northern Lakes League to uh, two really good teams and a Southview team that kind of like Napoleon has bounced up and down this year. Lost uh, at Sylvania to Northview, 61-46. Went to Anthony Wayne and battled with the Generals all the way to the end before losing 55-48. And then last night, again, 47-44 to Southview. Yeah, a little bit disappointing for them last night. I know they thought they had a good shot against Southview, just didn't get it done. Uh, shooting at the free throw line really hurt them. They're going to have to be solid there tonight if they're going to get the win here against Archibald. So looking forward to what should be a good one. It's the 87th meeting between Archibald and Napoleon. Blue Streaks lead the all-time series 47 to 39. We'll take a break, come back to our keys of the game when we return to the Thunderdome right after this. Miles Holiday back with you here in the uh, Thunderdome in Archibald where we are a few moments away from the tip of our Saturday night non-league basketball here on uh, Live Hoops. But, uh, let's take a look at uh, take a look at these two guys. That's Miles. I'm Randy. It's nice to be with you here. Uh, we had a fun one last night. Great game. Pettisville and Stryker. This promises to be a fun one as well. So you talked about uh, Napoleon and their tournament trail. Can tell you that Archibald is going to begin a Division Three tournament with a matchup uh, against Eastwood, a team that they saw already once this year in that uh, half bracket that uh, has uh, an Emmanuel Christian team that has uh, oh, Jerry Easter turn, Emmanuel, turned a few eyes. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're pretty good. But if it's a, it's a program that is familiar with deep runs in the, the tournament, it's Archibald. They've done uh, some good things in recent years. Uh, might not be this year, but remember, this is a young team. Everybody will be coming back next mm -hmm. year. So one of these times you get to the tournament, maybe make some noise and build some confidence for next year. Yeah, looking forward to our uh, tournament run. You can catch uh, all our tournament coverage coming up here just a couple of weeks. There's some uh, girls sectional action for you this upcoming week, followed by the uh, boys in uh, two weeks. So stay tuned with us here on WOSN for all of our tournament coverage all week long. So. Let's take a look at our keys to the game tonight. Let's start with the visiting Napoleon Wildcats. Yeah, Napoleon at number one, CK all the way. Who's CK? Well, that's Caden Cruz, partner. He is one outstanding player, 17 points, seven rebounds. Oh, by the way, not just a shooter only. He'll help his teammates out three times a game with assists and also will steal it. He's a thief in the night with two steals a night. He's going to have to have a big night for them. CK all the way. Number two, identify defenses. It's an Archibald team that doesn't play a lot of man defenses, don't match up really well, especially against a bigger team. They're going to mix in a lot of zone. You have to be able to be ready for that. Two, three, three, two, whatever Coach Frank wants to throw at him. Kitchen sink. They throw the kitchen sink out there. you got to identify it. Be ready for the changing defenses of Archibald. And then number three, play big. Partner, I saw this stat and I couldn't believe it. Archibald has been out rebounded by 210 rebounds this year. Don't let Archibald be competitive on the glass. Out rebound them. You're going to have a huge size advantage just on the front court starting 6'5 and 6'4. But if you want to bring Rubenstein in at 6'3, boy, you're going to have a lineup that's absolutely bigger or as big as anyone on Archibald's team. So play big. And let's take a look at the keys to the game for the Archibald Blue Streaks. Uh, number one, have a sunny day. A sunny day. That's Sonny Phillips, the point guard number one. He is improving six points a game. They have the two scorers in Siler, and they have the other scorer in Brenner. They need that third scorer. Is it going to be sunny? Well, Coach Franks thinks it's going to be. He's a guy that can break the defense down, get in the middle of the key. He's going to have to have double digits for them to have a chance tonight. Number two, flatten it out. Bring the floor up, bring a screener up, flatten them out at the top of the A, let your point guard work off that screen. So if they hedge, they're gonna trail it. You'll see that come out of the offense tonight for Archibald, flatten it out in a big way. And then number three, be aggressive but smart. Just because you have a shot doesn't mean you should take the shot. Work for a good shot on the offensive end. If you're taking quick shots tonight, that's gonna help Napoleon. So be smart, but be aggressive. Another veteran crew, uh 
with the stripes handling our officiating tonight. See Wayne Allstatter, Reyes Ramirez, and Paul Stoll. So double dip of Paul. Saw him in uh, Pettisville last night. So I hope you enjoyed the back-to-back uh, -back -back de facto league championship game that we had for you on WOSN with Ottawa Glandorf and Defiance, followed by uh, our game between Pettisville and Stryker. Oh, congratulations, Otto Glandorf yeah. and Defiance. Yeah. Haven't, haven't claimed it yet. There's still a little bit of basketball to be played, but obviously the biggest here. Actually, actually they did. I believe they now have a yeah. They'll, they'll, no worse than a title tie. If they trip up Defiance <laughs> wins, I guess they can share it. But. I'm going to go ahead and project them as the league champs. Uh, Colin White, what a great job. Mag did a good job for them, but yeah, Defiance played extremely well as also. And then Defiance played today. Congratulations to Caden Zacharich for Defiance. Thousand points, not in that game, but as a career, that'd be some kind of record. But congratulations to Caden Zach. And Defiance already with a big win over Bath and a postponed game because of weather played earlier today. So we'll step aside here. We'll get ready as our uh, Archibald Pep Band is going to perform our national anthem. Great job, as always, by the Archibald Pep Man. New plan on uh, being back here in Archibald next Friday, I do believe. Archibald and Patrick Henry, and a lot on the line for the Patriots. A chance to earn at least a piece of the Northwest Ohio Athletic League boys basketball titles. It looks like uh, Patrick Henry and Wasian have set themselves up for a uh, share of the league title. So each team still has uh, one more league game to go. And I understand in the NWAL, even though the two teams tie and there's a head-to-head -head breaker with Wasian beating Patrick Henry, it's still going to be a co-championship. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Right. Yes. Is there anybody playing better in Northwest Ohio than Wasian right now? No, they're, they're I'm going to say no. Uh, they, they have uh, put it together. That is for sure off to a Division II district at uh, Lake. And it looks like a, a potential rematch against a really good Rossford team that uh, the Indians have already defeated in the district semifinal. Tough to believe that. Was it right around maybe just after Christmas, right around the first of the year? Wasian at one point was seven and seven. Now it was actually that Rossford win that kind of got them going yeah. in a big way. Maybe gave them confidence. And Chad Burt's got them playing very controlled. They are so tough-minded defensively. Of course, we had them against Delta you know, last week, and they just frustrated Delta. That game was promised to be a great matchup, and mentally they just kind of got Delta to fold and got got the second half going all the way. And of course. Big Chief three ball, Tyson Rodriguez. He was dynamic that night. Uh, last night it was Elijah McLeod was the guy that stepped up, and that's been, uh, I, I guess, the missing piece for Wasian. Is you never know where the offense is going to come from, but they have found ways to uh, score the basketball. 
playing their best ball of the year at the right time as we are heading into the tournament. Don't forget, we've got our uh, bracket breakdown show with the guys. Yeah, absolutely. The WOSN selection show, which I was uh, able to be a part of by interviewing a couple of coaches. They did a great job down there. But uh, I always get concerned in tournament time if you go against teams that play great defense and they can rebound to basketball. Those are tough teams to knock out. Wasian carries that with them in the gym every single night. So the introduction of the starting lineups going on right now. They'll give us the opportunity to run through those lineups for you once again for the visiting Napoleon Wildcats. We will see, looks like uh, Kellen Ressler, Blake Wolf, Andrew Williams, Caden Cruz, and uh, Caleb Stoner. And the starting lineup for the Archibald Blue Streaks. They've kind of settled into their roles. Sonny Phillips, Kate Brenner, Jaden Seiler, Stephen Diller, and Chase Miller. Now, Seiler's going to have to have a, a 15 type of night, if not more. You know, Brenner's going to get 15 or more. And of course, Sonny Phillips got to be a sunny day. Sonny's going to have to get in double digits if they're going to have a uh, chance to win this basketball game. And Dillard Miller and Don Singer, when he comes in, you don't have to win the rebounding. You just got to be, at least make it a battle, right? You can't mm -hmm. give up every single rebound to a much bigger Napoleon team. Also, if you couldn't tell, pink out here tonight in the Thunderdome. Tough to match pink, isn't it? It is. There's like a thousand different shades of pink. I see one gentleman over there. He's got the light pink hat, hot pink shirt, and I don't know, any Sartreuse shorts maybe? I don't know. Uh, Napoleon in the blue, Archibald in the white, tip controlled by the blue streaks, and we are underway. Scoreboard tonight brought to you by the State Bank, invested in Northwest West Central Ohio for skilled, objective, and caring financial planners. Streaks trying to get it inside. Looks like a bit changed that starting lineup. Mike and Nofsinger out here tonight, a late scratch. I had a 13-point effort a week ago. Coach said he was uh, thinking about starting Nofsinger because they're so big, the front court of Napoleon. I guess he went ahead and went with that change. Ball knocked away. It's going to stay with the streaks here. Just underway on our Saturday night contest. This one's going to be knocked away. Get the steal. And how about the jam to start? Oh, yes, you can. CK, a little dunkalicious to start this game. Caden Cruz trying to go up one hand with a tomahawk. What a way to begin. Holy Cats with the early 2 0 lead. Did you see how big his eyeballs got on that steal? He could not wait. Nofsinger had the ball. It was a pass or it was knocked away. It went to a teammate. Mike and Nofsinger will get it back. Comes around top of the key, throws it into the corner. And a point uh, trapping Brenner. Someone's got to come help. Smart play by Brenner to throw it up, but it goes off of him. As our producer, Ken Reeker, said, doing the jam again. Here we go on the replay, and why not? Oh, look at the takeoff ability. Unbelievable. How good of an athlete is Caden Cruz? The tomahawk in a big way. Takeoff ability. <laughs> yeah. Pull-up jumper is going to be good for the Cats. They'll take a 4-0 lead as Caleb Stoner able to get it and score. Well, interesting what Napoleon is electing to do with Archibald. They are playing 100% denial on Brenner, and that's what they're really their best athlete on the team, Andrew Williams guarding him. Brenner pull-up jumper is going to go up and over the backboard, so that'll head out of bounds, and the basketball will now belong to the Wildcats. Now see how Archibald likes to play. Napoleon going to pick him up about three-quarter. Going with a zone 1-2-2. Two, two. Looks like the Cats able to break the pressure, pull-up jumper, step inside the free-throw line. No good for Cruz. Rebound out to Archibald. They'll push it up the floor with Seiler. Well, Archibald will take it, right? It's one shot and done. They are able to get the rebound on that pressure. Nice dump off inside and a good look. And able to finish that off is Mike Nofsinger. Oh, how about the dish by Sonny Phillips? Broke the defense down, found the big fella. Big country with the easy two. Makes it 4-2 on our State Bank scoreboard. Cruz trying to back down his defender on his own. Left it short. Nofsinger able to come up with a miss. A good recognition by him. He had the smaller Phillips on him. 
wasn't able to convert. Phillips thought about pulling up from the elbow. Instead, he'll get rid of the basketball. Gets it back in the corner. Gets a screen coming to his left with that left-hand dribble. Back out to Chase Miller. Miller gets his defender in the air. Ball's knocked away, and Napoleon's going to get it. As Miller trying to get a call down under the basket. Yeah, look like Caden Cruz got an eye rake holding his eyes. Set at the other end, about a three ball as Blake Wolf knocks down a triple. Now Wolf is howling from the corner. Opens up a five point lead for the Cats here, three minutes into this one. Uh, just too easy for Napoleon to score so far. Archibald gonna have to do a better job defensively. Seiler able to step back, set his feet off the mark, but Nofsinger right there, double clutch is a put back. And we'll get a whistle and a foul, which stops our play. Yeah, a little reason why Coach Frank elected to start Nofsinger. Good job on the low block. That pass by Seiler goes long. That's exactly what it was. It was. Napoleon foul on Caleb Stoner. It's going to be his first, first of the night. And it comes, as you see, thanks to our State Bank scoreboard, 4.48 to go in our opening quarter. Nofsinger, turnaround jumper from the elbow, nothing but net. That looks like it's in his repertoire, too. That was comfortable. Big Nofsinger. All four of Archibald's points, streaks down three. Speaking of threes, corner three up and over as it nearly plinkoed its way down the uh, back side of the back. Ooh, Plinko, the price is right. It's my favorite game. Why didn't they have it every show, though? They should have. They should have. Should have been every game. Yep. Just Plinko six times. That and the, the Yodel guy, mm -hmm. that was a good one as well. If you missed it, I believe early on in our broadcast career, I think we recre or I recreated <laughs> you did. it. You did. There's no we. It was all me. Ball's out of bounds, by the way. Archibald's going to turn it over so we get back to the live action. And Archibald not too upset. Gets him back into that 1-2-2. Two, two. If Napoleon just elects to throw over top of it, they're going to have some success. If they dribble against it, it's going to be tougher. Kellen Ressler's pass along the baseline is going to be knocked three rows deep and off Napoleon, so they'll turn it over. Hmm, that was an odd call. Looked like it was off of a Archbold hand, but maybe the pinky got involved I guess. on a blue jersey. Streaks with it. Hanging around, there's a baseline pass. Reverse layup doesn't go, and we're going to get a reach called here. On Blake Wolves, Kate Brenner nearly had as we take a look at the replay. Yeah, look at uh, Knopfsinger, not just a score, but he passes a well. Williams overplaying the perimeter backdoor cut. Good basketball IQ by Brenner, but then the awareness to go up and get it again. Stick to this. Gets the foul. Second foul whistled against the Wildcats here. 335 and counting left to go in our opening quarter. I know they called it on the floor, but what was he doing? He was going to shoot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, to me, it should have been a shooting foul. Three-point ball is no good, but how about Mike Nofsinger making his presence felt with a putback? Oh, might be a coming out party for big country. The sophomore getting it started for Archbold. Yeah, you said it in our pregame partner, had 13 here recently. Cats trying to answer on the other end. How about the second three-pointer of the night, Blake Wolf. Uh, Blake Wolf release, rotation, and splash. Two big threes early, averages 10 points a game. He might have himself a big night. Puts Napoleon back in front by four. And as they try, it looks like Nofsinger <laughs> was open, didn't get the pass, shrugged his shoulders, then continued on with the offense. Yeah, he's like, I'm hot. Give me the ball. Give me the rock. Instead, how about Miller top of the key for three, buries it. Uh, Chase Miller, 34% from behind the arc, 100% that time. Back to a one-point game. Archibald's dug back in, hasn't taken the lead. The short jumper in and out. It's Trey Rubenstein couldn't get it down, and here come the streaks. Chance to lead. Miller's second three attempt, no good. Rebounds tipped, and it's going to be saved high in the air. It's going to hit like one of the cables that supports the backboard. But they'll play on finally. It's out of bounds. Tell me, you thought it was going in for a second. I thought it was. Yeah. I thought I was like, it was. We're going to have ourselves an amazing play right there. Instead, it'll just be the simple turnover. Napoleon will get it here. 
very quickly bring the ball into the front court, trying to catch Archibald, taking the time getting back on defense. Kellen Ressler out between the circles, issues a pass over the wing left side. So here's Andrew Williams. That kind of looks like a, a box in one, but they're just denying the post. Skip pass went over the top. Wolf unable to get his third three. Instead, they'll give it to Williams, who's able to slash his way in and score. Yeah, Andrew Williams, what an athlete he is. So quick, holds the school record. What do you have, like 500 yards in a game this year? Felt like it. Yeah, it was absolutely sensational. Archibald trying to answer back. Corner three from Evan Wynn is off the mark. Here come the Cats quickly up to the floor. Reverse layup's going to be no good. Chase Riller comes down with a miss. Hey, Wolf might have been better served just to come down with it on that catch. Oh, boy, how about that pick city there? And instead, just the layup. No dunk that time as Blake Wolf settles for the layup as he's got eight here in the opening quarter. Yeah, just kind of a ho-hum layup, right? We expected to see another dunk. Pushes that Napoleon lead to a five as we roll under a minute to go in our opening quarter. That shows you how athletic Wolf is, though. Comes out on the perimeter, moves the feet, the quick hands. Gets himself a steal playing against a guard. So what what will Wolf have to do to get you to howl like a wolf tonight <laughs> in our broadcast? I don't know if anybody wants to hear that. I tell you what, if Ken plays Warren Zevon, I will I will howl during this broadcast. How about that? Kate Brenner double teamed right in front of the scores tables, able to knock it off a Napoleon player as we'll have. A handful of substitutions. Hey, I know Archibald's down five with 23 seconds left, but if you're Joe Frank, you gotta be a little pleasantly surprised, happy a little bit, right? Especially if you convert here right before the end of the quarter. You know, it, it looked like early in this game that no point was just gonna run and hide, but they've kind of just kind of fought their way back into this thing. And they're definitely gonna hold it for the last shot, aren't they? And they'll have to get across the timeline. Ball was thrown into the backcourt, Sonny Phillips. He does a smart thing, comes across the timeline. Brenner either calling for the ball or setting a screen. That was kind of running away from the action. Brenner gets it back, and he's going to be pushed a little bit. Will force Napoleon to inbound again, as you see, 3.8 to go in our opening quarter. Yeah, I don't think that was a call from the bench to foul. I just think Peckinpah kind of got his hands involved on it. Well, that foul number 10 is Peckinpah. That is the first on Peckinpah. Archibald again, get it in. Here's Brenner. Long distance oh, oh, three, oh, buries oh, it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what a way to end the opening quarter. Big triple makes it a two-point game. We'll have the second quarter for you right after this. Oh, big bucket. By Cade Brenner, his first of the night to make this a two-point lead for Napoleon after one quarter of play. Well, Cade Brenner, one of those guys that, oh, here's going to be the backdoor cut first. Knopsinger finds him, goes up, hangs in the air. You see his ability to jump out of the, off the floor. That's why he's such a, an elite scorer. And here's Williams coming up through with a little teardrop. Showing off his athletic ability and uh, Dunk City? No, nah, I'm just going to take it easy. Styling and profiling Wolf off of the steal. Part of the reason why Napoleon has the lead after one quarter, but it could have been five. Now here's Williams, his triple try off the mark. Rebounds tapped out, and the Cats will keep it alive. Cruz with it, top of the key. Go back inside out. Rubenstein left open, he'll let fly from long range. That one's going to be off the mark, and Brenner has the rebound. He's going to give ahead. Oh. Nice save under the basket. Ball's going to be stripped out of the hands of Steven Diller, and now a double dribble to call in transition. I actually think Diller was surprised that Phillips was able to go up and get that. What a sensational grab by Phillips to save it. Could have had himself one of the spectacular assists of the year. Diller wasn't able to get two hands on it. Jaden Seiler's going to come back into the game for the Blue Streaks, as will Chase Miller. 
Napoleon's led this one the entire way. There's a ball out of bounds, and it's going to stay with Archbold. Mm, always makes me nervous when you try to pass it into a corner. You have two extra defenders right there. Such a small area. Good shot at Chad Bosselman, head coach for Napoleon. Nice see the shave for the Knights game there, coach. Trying to restore proud program that he played for. Nice jump, cutting, good move to the basket. Kate Brenner, good luck and the easy bucket. Uh, second time they've been able to bait Williams on a backdoor cut, overplaying the three-point shot of Brenner. Gets the layup on it. Turnaround jumper is going to be no good, but we're going to get a foul on the rebound. It's Trey Rubenstein, looks like he jumped a little early trying to get for it. He's going to get helped out with a call. Archibald foul is going to go on Steven Diller, his first. First of the night, whistled against the streaks here with 7-1 to go in our second quarter. You can see that in our scoreboard tonight, brought to you by the State Bank. Wolf thought about the quick three. Instead, they'll move it to that high post. Trying to go baseline, and the look inside is going to be deflected away, and it's going to stay in Napoleon's end. Yeah, Napoleon really struggling with this. Box in one look. Seiler just denying everywhere Cruz goes. Pass comes out top of the key and a nice play there. Sonny Phillips will take it away. Phillips right to the basket, goes over the left hand, looking for some contact, none called. Wolf in traffic, spins, falls away, scores. Oh, kind of looked like a Blake Griffin move right there from back in the day. Off the wrong foot, doesn't matter. Rise and fire, Blake Wolf. Wolf now with 10 to the 16, and we're going to have an offensive foul called here. Sonny Phillips is going to pick up his first foul, and it's a turnover, and Napoleon will come back with a basketball. There's a good look at the zone setup, and then Seiler denying Cruz. See, two guys up top playing zone, two guys down low playing zone, then Seiler. Playing the one. First time I saw boxing one defense employed, Georgetown against Chris Mullen in St. John's. Well, how about Blake Wolf? I'm just going to step through and around and hit the baseline jumper. Now he's having himself a heck of a night so far. He was howling mad, not getting shots. But the answer in the other end is Jordan, or Jaden Seiler, excuse me. His first points of the night come via the three-pointer. Oh, three for all for the offensive Archbold. Seiler that time. Streak still hanging around. Good look inside. Move down to the low block. As Caden Cruz picks up his second bucket of the night. Now you see why they're so concerned. Archbold, that is, about Cruz. He gets it in the low block. It's an automatic mismatch with his strength. 20 to 17. Ball is going to be deflected, and it's going to stay with... The blue streaks as Mike Nolsinger checks back into the lineup for the streaks. Yeah, smart play by Miller, pulling his hands down to the last second, recognize it had been deflected. Once again, I want to tell you that a scoreboard tonight brought to you by the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. So far on that State Bank scoreboard, 20 to 17. That might change. Here's a ball in transition, a loose ball on the floor. Napoleon's able to keep it. Wolf got his defender in the air. Now he's going to try that baseline jumper on the other side and gets nothing but net. Oh, well, nothing bothers him. Took a karate kick to the shoulder on the up fake. Dribbles around, hits the baseline jumper. Keep feeding Blake Wolf. He's hungry. 14 of the 22. Hungry like a wolf. I like it. I like it. Maybe put a Chinese menu in his hand. It's a five point lead for Napoleon here. Still. Five minutes, 14 seconds before we get to halftime. What's been an entertaining game. A couple of long-standing former league rivals. Predates uh, my time in high school athletics. Boy, how long ago was that? 1970s? Okay. All right. That was uh, before Napoleon left the NWAL? Yes. And then they went to the GLL, right? Yes. Okay. And then uh, spent some time as an independent. Mm -hmm. Long time, really. Settled into their home in the Northern Lakes League that will undergo 
some changes for the next school year. It'll be more like which teams are not in the NLL coming up. <laughs> it seems to be. That was the talk of the town all year. About a three balls. The streaks come battling back. Uh, Cade Brenner, big time offensive threat all year long, delivers yet again for Archbold, this time from way downtown. Andrew Williams trying to answer his three well off the mark, but a good offensive rebound. There's Kellen Ressler with the open look in his first points. A wrestler likes two, he likes two, Randy, but he really loves three. That was gonna turn into a three fest to Siler tried, that's no good. And now the Cats push in transition, up five. Trying to work the ball around the perimeter, go inside the floater around the cylinder and in for Trey Rubenstein. Yeah, just a little bit of the athletic ability exposed right there by Rubenstein. You see why they love the super sophomore. How about that explosion and then the floater. Mike Nofsinger from 15 tried to bank it in, couldn't get it off the iron. Here comes Napoleon. They like the tempo. They look to run right now. Wrestler at the top of the key. Looked like he wanted to go one-on-one. -on -one. His pass is going to be taken away. Good job using the length of Brenner inside to Sonny Phillips, who's able to finish with the score. Well, how about the left-handed bounce pass on a dime by Brenner and Phillips with a big-time finish. Wrestler wants to quickly come back. He's going to get pushed in the lane. That's going to stop the action here, but we take a look at this replay. Oh, he should be a card dealer, Brenner, that is. See him go from right to left and bounce it on a dime. Going right into your... Living room to finish by Phillips. Just like a couple of late substitutions here for Archbold. As Evan went back into the lineup now. All right, so when Cruz is out of the game, they went boxing one on Wolf, and why not? The guy's been absolutely on fire. Well, heat check three off the inbound's gonna be no good. Nofsinger displaying his power as he rips the rebound away. Brenner picks up his dribble over to Went. A great hedge by Wolf to stop Brenner from that left-handed dribble drive. Miller's going to get the entry pass. It was deflected. Mike Nofsinger, turn around. That's going to be blocked. Caden Cruz comes up with it over to Williams. Williams had the ball knocked away, but he's able to get it back. Trying to go inside to Wolf. Had a good job by Archibald getting back on defense. That's the big country. Nofsinger hustling down, getting a little piece of that. Had the block shot against him on the defensive end. Didn't give the boo-boo face, ran down and hustled. Cats get the inbound in. There's the high post pass to Rubenstein. Kick out Wolf, his three's no good. Rubenstein, the put back, puts it up and in. Well, it's just been the Achilles heel all year long for Archbold, giving up offensive rebounds yet another time. Napoleon capitalizes. Talked about Rubenstein, 6.7 rebounds. There's a look at it right there. As an errant pass ends up out of bounds, it's an Archibald turnover. Yeah, Archibald really snacking on danger right here, down seven with 243. They don't want this to expand to a double digit lead right before half. It's been about the biggest lead of the night for the Wildcats. Kellen Ressler gets a screen, works that right side. Doubles back when he can't find anyone. Wolf, no problem shooting. His high arcing three is no good. Just taking the rebound away and putting it in. Caden Cruz. Oh, it's kind of like when you're playing in the backyard with your little cousins. Keep away. Just keeping the ball over their head. Unbelievable length by Cruz. Able to get creative. Siler's going to step into a three and bury it. His second triple tonight. Nah, he's a big time shooter. And what do big time shooters do? They knock down big time shots. Siler delivers. Back to a six point lead. Under two minutes to go. Quick moving, very entertaining opening half of basketball. Wrestler pulls up from the baseline. That one's going to be well off the mark. Evan Went comes down with a miss. Went tries to push into the front court, stopped just shy of the timeline. Now gets it across. And now a little hand fighting, trying to fight through a screen. We're going to get a whistle and a stoppage here as Andrew Williams is going to be guilty of a foul. Yeah, got a little handsy with Brenner. Brenner was trying to cut through the key. Williams was a little bit tardy on that, so he just held. Good job by the officials cleaning it up inside. 
So that'll allow teams to make a couple of substitutions. Looks like Steven Dillard checks back into the lineup. Also see Josiah Gomez in for the first time tonight here. 90 seconds to play before the half in the Thunderdome. Look inside, nothing there for Archibald, so they'll send it around. Chase Miller, three is good. Well, the whole offense revolves by around the number three. Archibald loving it from deep. That's their sixth in the opening half. Williams misses wild on the putback, but the third effort up and good out of Caleb Stoner. Yeah, Caleb Stoner shoots 50% from the field. You want to know how? They're all from five feet and in. Here's another steal, trying to get it under the basket was Cruz. As he lost the handle, he's going to try to reach in, and he looks like he's going to be guilty of a foul. Uh, it's a tail as old as time, right? You missed the layup. What must you do? Foul. You Have must to foul. foul Have right to foul. away. And they're going to dial up Cruz. Cruz looked like he got caught on getting his feet on a layup or a dunk and went off his shin. Had to go really deep on that reverse layup. Should just be happy it wasn't the big tomahawk chop trying to come through it, right? Isn't that the rule? <laughs> I think we are all anticipating it, weren't we? A long three, Siler again trying to bank that in. It's no good. Rebound is tipped. Taken away by Napoleon. Now loose ball on the floor. Streaks are going to get it back. And we'll get a whistle. Looks like a foul. And we'll see... I believe our first two free throws of the night. Uh, good job by Gomez getting the steal. And then Brenner, here's what I like, partner. He doesn't make the extra pass. He says, oh, wrestler, you're going to try and stop me? I'm going to go right through you, putting my chin right on your chest. It's Kate Brenner, an 81% free throw shooter, steps to the line where he knocks down the first. He's got a little Penny Hardaway in him, doesn't he, when he attacks the lane? With his length and his ability to get off the floor, looks like a young Anthony Hardaway. Brenner gets both free throws. Back to a three-point lead here. Well, Napoleon looks like they're going to be happy to either go up by going at three or get a last shot here. The wrestler just yo-yoing the basketball. Moves just enough to get a five-second call taken off. Try to get the ball. Knocked away from him from behind, and a whistle coming in. And is that the seventh foul? No, it's going to be the looking at the wrong team. That's yeah, the fourth. fourth. Yeah, not a bad foul because now you you make them take it in from 5.8 left. Gomez on Cruz comes in the wrestler. Wrestler trying to find Wolf. Wolf sets. Fires, and it is no good as we have reached the half. A very entertaining first half of basketball. The Napoleon Wildcats take a three-point lead into the break, and we'll have more when we return. You're watching High School Basketball Live on WOSN. So 37, or I'm sorry, 33, 30 our score here at the half. Looking forward to what should be a very entertaining second half since six three-pointers by Archibald has kept them in this basketball game. If this was a boxing match, you'd have the big slugger with Napoleon, right? And then you have the guy working outside in with the fast little punches, right? That's what it's been so far, speed versus power. Been a lot of fun, though. How about the attitude of Archibald come out fighting to get in this basketball game? Looking forward to the uh, second half. Should be a very good uh, game, and we want to thank the State Bank. Anytime you uh, see the score, it's thanks to our scoreboard brought to you by the State Bank, invested in Northwest West Central Ohio, the skilled, objective, and caring financial planners. Archibald will start with the basketballs. We are underway here in quarter number three. Yeah, still playing denial on Brenner with Williams. Wrestler came off and helped when Brenner ran him off a screen. It's like Brenner, Sonny Phillips, Chase Miller, Mike Singer, and who am I forgetting? Jaden Seiler on the floor for Archibald. Napoleon with Kellen Wrestler, who has the basketball right now, pulling up his shot that is no good. Blake Wolf, King Cruz as Nofsinger 
left open and is able to sneak free and score. Yeah, second time now Singer has been able to beat people down the floor. Good catch over to the shoulder, good find by Phillips. Archibald only down by one. Stoner and Williams, by the way, the final five, or the final two of the Napoleon Five, is Stoner able to pick up his third bucket of the night. How about him helping you out, hitting that jumper, or say, hey, I'm on the floor. Mm -hmm. Always appreciate it. Don't just naturally become this good. It takes a little bit of time. Napoleon with the turnover. Williams trying to get into traffic. He's going to have the ball knocked away off of his body before it's out of bounds. So Archibald will get the basketball right back. Oh, how fun is it going to be to watch Micah Knopfsinger, big country, the next two years. First running the floor on the catch layup. That time extending with a big block. He's really earned the minutes that he's picked up here the last, uh, say, two weeks, three weeks. There's a straight steal. Cruz had the ball taken away. And now a little two-man game as Williams sets him up for the easy score. I thought Williams might have made the, the wrong extra pass. I thought he had the clear path for the layup, but dish it off to Cruz, and he delivers. Pushes that lead back to five. Long triple try off the mark. And Napoleon with another rebound as Stoner gets it out in the outlets to Blake Wolf. Wolf had a huge opening half at 14 of the 33. See, so as the ball knocked away, it's going to stay with Napoleon. Yeah, he's absolutely dominant in that first quarter. If you're Chad Bosselman, you got to be excited, though, that it was one and done, and it was a long three by Archbold. If you can get them shooting 24-footers like they showed on the last possession, you're going to be happy. Good turn around, the low block. That one just rolls off the rim for Cruz. And the streaks get it, and they look to push. Here's Chase Miller, a little hesitation move. It's rid of the basketball in the corner for Sonny Phillips. Phillips nearly had it knocked away from behind. His floater, a little leaner in the lane is good. Oh, it's a sunshiny day. Nice job, Sonny Phillips. Seems like he can get to the middle of the floor, break it down, get in the key anytime he wants. Couple of baskets for him tonight. Has it back to a three-point game. Wrestler with the three, it's no good. Ball's going to be tipped. Archibald able to come away with it. Streaks chance to perhaps tie. Instead, they'll go for two as Jaden Seiler's first two-point bucket makes it a one-point game. And now reaches call. Sonny Phillips thought he had all ball, <laughs> but the man with the whistle and striped shirt disagrees. Oh, you didn't see that camera, but Joe Frank, the head coach of Archibald, spun and sprinted to the end of the bench. He did not want to make eye contact with the official. He was so upset with that call. Still continues to shake his head in a disagreeing fashion. Cats get it back. Here's Wolf. He's double teamed. Gets the kick out. Three ball. That will find its way through. Violently through the cylinder Ooh. by Caden Cruz. That's an angry three ball by Cruz. Such a talented player. Fun to watch. That's the one where we can catch the ball coming down. You just expect a frowny face, right? Oh. How about Evan Went with the answer? Evan Went steps up. Three with a man that wears three. A fun one so far, 40-39 on our State Bank scoreboard. Williams has to climb the ladder to come down with that one. It's into the lane, his runner off the side of the backboard. Miller's going to have the ball jarred free. It's loose on the floor. Here's Cruz. Is he going to get a second? He will. What's better than one Dunkalicious? Two Dunkalicious. 42-39. I heard the count in my head. One, <laughs> one, two. <laughs> Archibald trying to go three. That's going to be no good. Rebound out of bounds. Tipped. And it's going to be Napoleon Ball. And Miles, have fun with this one. Oh, how about this? Our producer, Ken Reeker, says, let's play the jam again. Yes, we are. Oh, and yes, you can, young man. Duckalicious. Doing it like a young Randy Roberts used to do. Almost the hidden ball trick. Had the thing pinned to his hip. Long time ago in my playing days, ask anyone. Wolf, well, all right, well, you dunk. I'll just uh, hit this 15-foot baseline floater. Hey, credit Napoleon, though. Every time Napoleon puts on a run to close it to one or evens it up, they just respond every single time. Now back up by five. Streaks trying to cut into that lead once again. 
as uh, Seiler with the basketball. It's it into the corner. Miller, another three ball. That one, no good. Long rebound it is going to be saved. We're going to get a push. I think Seiler's going to, nope, that will not be Seiler. It's going to be Chase Miller. Now Chase Miller trying to get the loose ball, just contacts. A little too much, a little bumper car action on the baseline. Easy call for the official. Second foul whistled against the streaks here in our third quarter. Napoleon will get it. As you see in our State Bank scoreboard, leading this one by five. It's never been more than, what, seven, I think, the biggest seven lead of the night? Seven was the biggest in the first half, and it was a good response by Archbold to bring it back down and changing defenses again by Archbold. Elbow jumper is no good, but again, that weakness is rebounding for Archbold, and that's going to allow Trey, Trey Rubenstein to come in with another offensive board and put back. Yeah, Rubenstein just doing the work on the boards, getting second chance opportunities. A three pointer halfway down, rims out, went with the offensive rebound. We'll give the streaks a second opportunity. Archibald Little Helter Skelter, some of the offense. We're going to get a push coming here on Napoleon. Blake Wolf guilty of the foul. A little surprised that Phillips didn't make that pass into the corners. Siler, who was all by himself. But I like the aggressiveness getting into the lane, drawing the foul. Archibald will inbound as the officials getting everyone set. Very fast moving third quarter, we're already down 239. Went, trying to go inside to the trees. Here's one poked free, but the loose ball saved by Archibald going back to Nofsinger. And Mike Nofsinger off the mark and just ripping the rebound away will be Caleb Stoner. Stoner now on the offensive end, a little jump stop, a little window, a little score. A good find by Blake Wolf, who's not just a scorer, averages three assists. He loves his teammates, and you're going to see it right here. You run the floor for Wolf. Hey, don't forget, he's a quarterback in the fall. Yet another completion, this time for an easy two to Storner. Uh, timeout on the floor here, 2.20 to go in the third. We'll take a break. You're watching High School Basketball live on WOSN. The last bucket by Napoleon is now giving the Wildcats their biggest lead of the night here, 48-39, as we play late in quarter number three. Now timeout by Archbold because every head basketball coach has that alarm on their bench that goes, danger, 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 call timeout, down by nine. Got to get tempo back going their way. Been a good one here in the Thunderdome. Once again, Miles and I be back here next Friday. We will settle the NWOAL championship at one point. We were in the middle of a four-way tie, and we've now thinned that out to perhaps a two-way tie. Yeah, Patrick Henry survived Delta last night, so really sets up an opportunity for them to grab one for the first time since. Long time. Long time, yeah. That's, Randy has some work to do this week, I guess. If only knew the guy that's in charge of all that stuff for the <laughs> NWOAL. Well, out of a timeout, what you don't want is a turnover, but Brenner steals it to save Coach Frank from getting upset on the sideline. And Brenner just unhappy that the stoppage didn't allow for the layup that he was on his way to hit. They've been struggling to get the ball inbound here of late. And the point doing a really good job of playing these sets, but they're going to elect to let Phillips have it in the backcourt and dig in. Phillips able to bring the ball across the timeline. Well, he'll get it back. Trying to move to that right side. There's Went, top of the key. I tried the back door cut again with Brenner. Woo. The back door cut was played really well by Wrestler. And then I'd say that was played really well by Stoner, huh? Don't know how loud that actually was. We were able to hear it through our headsets. I thought we were watching volleyball for a second. And the streaks left to inbound once again as they just have to shoot it out to the top of the key. I'm trying to go inside. This time they go inside out. Chase Miller gets his defender in the air. Can't bank it in. Rebounds fought for, and it is Wrestler that wins the battle for Napoleon. Mm, 
mm, they needed that basket in the worst way. Good defensive rebound from Napoleon to deny him. But the blind pass to the corner, Wolf three doesn't go down. But the putback does bounce in once again. Trey Rubenstein able to score. Oh, the sophomore knows where to play offensively. Just hang out on the little block. Good things will happen. Another putback variety for Rubenstein. At eight points, and I want to say six on putbacks. Yep. Eight points, at least four rebounds just on offense. And now foul called on Napoleon. And Archibald thought they were going to inbound on the baseline. Instead, everyone will have to come out to the side of the court. Nice. Good shot at Joe Frank, head basketball coach here, Archibald. Nice, is there a nicer guy in, in basketball? And he didn't have nice things to say about me when we got here, though. <laughs> he deserved it, though. Yeah. I always love visiting with Joe. Coach, coach Frank and I uh, go way back. And Joe, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Sure is. Even though he's a Michigan fan, we, we still like him. <laughs> It's a pass for the wing, deflected. That's going to stay with Archibald. Evan Wenton did a good thing by not grabbing the basketball. Mm, Stoner leaving the bench area for Napoleon. Yeah, Looks he's going like to come he... over. The trainer's going to, yeah. Archibald's trainer's going to look at him. Looks like take him back into the hallway or take a look at the trainer's table. I think he might have some blood yeah, on the, on the, on the jersey. Yep. yep. So no uniform change like our contest last night because... Of course, Randy's going to think Pettisville is two six nine guys. <laughs> Caden Jacoby six nine for Pettisville had to change jerseys, and Randy was surprised by like, who's this other six nine guy that's on the floor for Pettisville? It happens from time to time. Jump shot in the paint, no good. Here's a loose ball. Oh no! Oh, he missed it. Got tripped up trying to set his feet. Three ball is going to be deflected. That one's just going to be taken away in the air as the horn will sound, and that is how our third quarter will end. Napoleon able to push that lead out to 11 as we take a look at uh, Stoner. Yeah, Stoner, and we'll take a break here in WOSN. Napoleon able to outscore Archibald 17 to nine in that third quarter. Part of the reason you see him over there working with uh, Tina, the Archibald trainer, that is Caleb Stoner. Had a little blood drip, looks like trying to clean some of that up. And Tina Stanley always does a great job. Also one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Absolutely. But you wonder though, if this was a close game, she might take an extra couple minutes to make sure that he's all right. <laughs> Good pass inside is breaking free, heading to the basket is Andrew Williams, and he's able to pick up his second score of the night. Yeah, Williams, a, a sneaky scorer. We had them a year ago against Defiance where he had 13 points in the first half. Not a guy that they rely on to score, but he, he is capable. Extends that, that Napoleon lead just underway in our fourth quarter on our State Bank scoreboard. Well, hesitation move getting right to the basket. Unable to get the bucket is Phillips, and he'll have the rebound taken away. Cruz trying to weave his way around. Picked up his dribble. He's going to need some help. Finds Wolf, and Wolf's three off the heel of the iron. Rubenstein, another offensive rebound. It's at least his fifth of the night. Now contact inside. Now you saw the body language of Chase Miller just frustrated, uh, giving up yet another offensive rebound to Napoleon, and been the story of the season coming into the night. Given up 210 extra rebounds to their opponents, 575 to 365 on the year. Tough to win basketball games that way. Three ball off the inbound, left a little short. Another offensive rebound. This one's going to be taken away, though. Brenner, he's going to try his first. It nearly got it. Settles with a finger roll. Oh, we'll count it. We'll count it, though. A little finger. Dunkalicious for Brenner. Cuts that lead back down to 11. Streaks trying to hang around here with 6.40 to go. Boy, he had that go-go gadget arm extension, didn't he? A little stretch Armstrong. Wolf step back three, can't get it to go. And here's Archibald with a rebound. Trying to make this a single-digit game. Lots of defense applied there by Wrestler in the backcourt. Archibald had two on two, and now everyone will come join him in the frontcourt. 
Out of Phillips, and now we're going to have a push here as Jaden Seiler ends up back first on the floor. Uh, Ken Reeker enjoying all the above the rim type of play tonight. Here's your replay. How about him with a little peekaboo look? And yeah, we'll count that. The fingers were above. Count it, Mr. Brenner. All right, looks like I'm outvoted. So Brenner with a dunk. In five years, it's going to be the most vicious rim-rocking dunk ever in the history of dunks. Oh, they'll be talking about it at Iggy's, won't they? That's right. Thought about the step back three as well. Sonny Phillips making his way. Leaves it for Nofsinger and the and one. Well, how about big country? You want old school big man play? He's going to deliver. A little show and the go, pump fake. And then the finish. How about the excitement though? Let's go, blue streaks and the fist pump. It draws the applause here. Pretty evident who the fan and student section favorite is. And he'll add on the free throw to make it a three point play. Well, just kind of hanging around. Looked like this was going to be the moment where Napoleon ran away and hid, but it's now back to eight. Williams, his wing three doesn't go. Those were shots that were going for Napoleon in the first half. Rebound is no good. Second effort is going to be up and good. And now Caleb Stoner will have a chance at a three-point play. Well, whatever issue Stoner had with the trainer, it's been corrected in a big way because watch him get another weak side rebound and go through the contact of Miller. Just kind of flex right there to his teammates. Chase Miller guilty of the foul. His second as the free throw is good. So Stoner now with 11 as he makes Napoleon's first free throw of the night. And it's an 11-point lead on our State Bank scoreboard. From the volleyball line. Oh. Wow, that is sick stuff right there. 15 for Brenner, keeping the streaks in it. Well, tonight's broadcast brought to you by the number three from Archbold. Ben, all over that downtown distance, going inside. Nice job with the drop step as Rubenstein able to get a good look and now a quick timeout taken here. 4.55 left to go as Napoleon wants to talk about a couple of things on defense. Well, it's going to be a learning moment for Micah Knopfsinger right here. All post defender is going to try and get the steal right there, but if you don't get it and you're defending the post, that means an automatic easy layup by your opponent. Better serve just playing directly behind the guy in the post entry. Going to be a teachable moment over there on that Blue Streak bench. Well, Talked a little bit about each of these teams uh, in their tournament coming up here in a couple of weeks. Archibald will play in a sectional semifinal against Eastwood out of the Northern Buckeye Conference, a team that they saw right around the uh, Christmas break. As I believe Archibald goes, uh, I don't know if it was this order this year, but I think it's Pettisville, Ottawa, Glandorf, Eastwood over the holidays. Oh, right, right, right. So tough ones for them. Talked a little bit about uh, what's on the uh, agenda for Napoleon. We interviewed uh, Bryn Lehman, the head coach at uh, Defiance this week, and I asked him about the possibility of playing Napoleon, who knocked him out a year ago. And I said, "What? What did you? What do you feel about that?" And he goes, "One at a time. One at a time." He actually said, "We want that." Oh, we, 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 he said, "We'd want to get Napoleon back again. We, we want to play them again." Back to live action here, streaks with a basketball. Trying to cut in to what is again a 10 point lead. Cruz pokes another one free, he's just gonna go up with the offhand and lay it up and in. Now the seniors had himself, I'm sorry, the juniors had himself a heck of a night. But how about the answer for the streaks with a three? Sonny Phillips really starting to develop some confidence on the offensive end. It's going to be big for Archbold moving forward. But the offensive rebound again as Andrew Williams puts it right back up and in. 
Well, you hang out on the weak side at the low block against Archbold, you're gonna get some points. It's been a struggle to box out whoever it's been. That time Williams delivers for Napoleon. 61-50. You know, a pull up jumper from the free throw line, a little too strong. Good job on the rebound, Blake Wolf. Wolf able to bring it into the front court. Now had the ball knocked away on a pass. Renner tried to go for a second. He'll, he'll settle for the bucket as Archwell wants to take a timeout. Yeah, Brenner tried to draw the charge, or the block rather. A good steal by Phil's pickup. Watch Brenner, a little peekaboo over the shoulder. Gonna slow down just a little bit. And then, oh, how about the acting too? Looking like Bambi on ice right there. Back inside the nine point lead, 61-52. And again, we wanna thank the State Bank for being our scoreboard sponsor tonight. Invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring at financial planners. Now take a look at the huddles. Man, both teams, coaches got their attention still. Look at Bosselman working hard in that Napoleon timeout and then Coach Frank making great eye contact with his guys. And you got the records not where you want them usually. You know, sometimes you get teams that have players that drift away, don't have that same focus. Yeah, both these coaches doing a good job of maintaining that. And Napoleon trying to snap a three-game losing streak. Archibald said it's been an up-and-down year. And of course, battled through off-the-court issues. Yeah, you wonder how good this team would be had Alex Roth been healthy and able to play his senior year. He was such a fantastic player for him a year ago. No doubt he makes a difference in at least four or five of those games. Yeah, it's been uh, changes to personnel, trying to find the right groupings, and it feels like every time they find the right answer, someone else uh, comes in, is a nice job going, and coast to coast, Caden Cruz able to just get the floater. It's just kind of effortless, isn't he? It makes things look easy. 17 points now for Cruz. Pushes that lead back to double digits. We've been hovering around that most of this Fourth quarter, another long three is no good by Brenner. This time it's Archibald comes up with the offensive rebound. Seiler is able to get right to the rack and score. That gotta be a welcoming sight for Joe Frank to see Seiler attacking the rim. Oftentimes this year just settles to play behind the arc, but here of late attacking the rim and delivering. Seiler now with 10 as the pass is batted back into the hands of Cruz. Is Napoleon. Run some time off the clock here with 2.40 counting to go on our State Bank scoreboard. Wolf in the lane, and now we'll get a reach called. Archibald trying to run, run and jump with Sonny Phillips, but the problem with that is Sonny's only 5'10", and he's running and jumping against guys that are 6'3", so they're just throwing over top of him. Blue streak foul was on Brenner, his second, team's fifth. Each team still with a foul to give with 2.36 to go. As they work it back out to Cruz. Cruz right to the basket with a left hand, gets it to roll off. Once again, Andrew Williams, right place, right time, gets the putback. 80% of all rebounds go to the weak side. Andrew Williams, he knows that. He's played that well. Him and Rubenstein have played that extremely well as the ball is Poked free, but it's going to stay in possession of the streaks. Now Archibald in position where they really have to score quickly, and every time they touch the basketball, down 11 with 2.10 left. Brenner step back three, buries it. Four triples tonight for the young man. He's leading everyone in scoring with 20. We'll see if Archibald's got one more run in him as a kicked ball on the jump. Kate Brenner so impressive. That people forget just a junior. How electric of a player is he going to be, not only in the fall football-wise at quarterback, but in basketball next year. He's going to be really fun to watch. And Napoleon's got to throw it into the backcourt to a wrestler, and we're going to get a whistle. As Brenner... Still down. He does his best LeBron, doesn't he? <laughs> Trying to sell the fact that he was given a little shot in the nose. It's his third foul, sixth team foul. Still kind of shaking off the effects of that.
Officials are going to stop. Make sure it's not bleeding before they whistle the ball in for play. Uh, Brenner, a tough dude. He'll be fine. Back to Wrestler once again. This time it's Siler's able to take it away. And now whistle and a foul. A couple of free throws coming up here for the Blue Streaks. Well, he got it down to eight. You're going to have to get some turnovers to get this game won, and you get one right here. Problem was, everybody left Wrestler, right? There was no other <laughs> blue no jersey one. around. He's getting double teamed. Hey, fellas, come help. So Jaden Seiler, who's a 60% free throw shooter, will get a couple of free tosses here, and he hits the first. Archibald creeping closer now. Seven-point game with a minute 41 to go. And it'll stay there mm. as the free throw's no good. That was big. It would make it only a two-possession game. A wrestler in a tough spot after he got across the timeline. It's his coach yelling. We can hear from here for the timeout. Really great job by Chad Bossman calling timeout because Cardinal Sin picked the ball up right across half court. You really put yourself in a corner right there, literally and figuratively. Coach Bossman alertly calls a timeout to save possession. He's going to take the full minute to talk here. So minute 34 to go. Does leave each team by my count with three timeouts. Oh, actually, Archibald with two timeouts. 65-58 thanks to our State Bank scoreboard. If you're Archibald, though, if you don't get the steal right away, don't let the clock trickle off, right? Get the foul early. You need the time on that scoreboard if you're going to mount this comeback. Great effort out of both of these clubs who will wrap up the regular season. Napoleon will go Tuesday, Friday this final week as the Northern Lakes League. It just never seems like that 14-game conference schedule ends. <laughs> it doesn't, does it? Uh, they're, they're the league a couple years ago during COVID that had the tournament, right? Mm -hmm. Which uh, I think is a good idea. I wish more leagues would go to that, especially the, the leagues that have the only the one time through. Good look off the inbound, getting the man open, and I believe that is number three. Oh, you want another helping of Dunkalicious. Cruz delivers. Getting it the other end, a good score for Archibald as Stephen Diller able to score for the first time tonight. Oh, good pass inside, and that one is going to lead to a foul. <laughs> Ken Rieker calling up the jukebox saying, Jam number four. Well played, well designed by Coach Balsaman to get Cruz free. Goes through the contact. That time just a little bit over the front that time. A little variety out of Mr. Cruz. Expect to see a little jam counter in a corner at some point. We're going to hear Ken Rieker singing Pump Up the Jam by the end of the night. First free throw from Rubenstein is good. So give him 11 tonight. Very efficient out of him. Mm -hmm. Just hang out inside the key, wait for rebounds, get fouled, make your free throws. You've done that. It's a three possession game. Time's starting to be a factor as you see in our State Bank scoreboard. We near the one minute mark. It's not going to stop Brenner. Long three is going to be no good. Cruz with a rebound. His triple team trying to fight out of it. Ball's loose on the floor. Picked up again by Archibald. Miller trying to step back again. They'll find Brenner. Can't get it to go. Rebound's going to be tipped up. Nearly put in by a Napoleon player. And now a foul. And it looks like a couple of free throws coming for the Blue Streaks. Oh, Got to enjoy the tenacity out of the Blue Streaks. Attacking the glass. Brenner had a great look, couldn't get it. Now Sierra keeps it alive. How'd that not go wrestler, in? Wrestler almost the one that tipped that in for Napoleon for Archibald. Now we'll get a couple of free tosses coming out here out of Chase Miller. First one is good as it rattles around. That one more for effect. Uh, Got to play 100 denial on the inbound right here if you're Archibald. If you don't get the steal on the first pass, after a couple of dribbles, commit, commit the foul. Second one no good as Wrestler is able to come up with a miss. How much time does Archibald want to use here? It's a pass 
Williams will kick it right back out. And Napoleon seems to be in no hurry to score. Now the foul committed with 37 seconds to go. Kate Brenner guilty of his fourth foul. So here is a Blake Wolf at the line. He'll shoot the one and one. On its way, left short, rebound is knocked out of bounds. It's Mike and Offsinger unable to grab it. It's gonna stay with Napoleon. So teams will go offense for defense. With the experience of wrestler on the inbound, he'll get it right in, a nice job to the cutter. Blake Wolf unable to score, but he's gonna be fouled. It looks like a couple of more free throws coming up here for Napoleon. Here is Blake Wolf at the line. First one on its way, and it is good. So Mike and Offsinger back in for Archibald here. 36 seconds to go. Napoleon with a chance to push this lead back to double digits. And it is good as Blake Wolf able to get both free throws. Streaks quickly bring the ball into the front court. Trying to get shots off. Having some problems as Napoleon playing around the perimeter. Here's a three-point attempt. That one's going to be blocked. Still fighting, and now the foul is going to be committed here with 23 seconds to go. Is Chase Miller guilty of his fourth. And Trey Rubenstein at the line. He will shoot. The double bonus, 10th team foul whistled on Archbold. First toss, and see it off the front of the rim. So if Napoleon's able to hang on, they'll snap their three game win streak, go to nine and 11. Archbold will fall to 10 and 11. As he'll miss both free throws, so Archbold still with a chance here. 20 seconds to go, but they're gonna need some quick offense. Quickly get it ahead, here's Sonny Phillips. His three ball on the way, that one is no good. Rebounds tapped out of bounds. It's gonna belong to Napoleon here with 11 seconds left. As we see Kellen Ressler back in one more time. Inbound goes to Wolf. And it looks like Archibald electing to play off. The final seconds will tick away. And our final tonight here from the Thunderdome will have the Napoleon Wildcats picking up the win as they defeat the Blue Streaks tonight, 71 to 61. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll head down to the court with our Miles Holiday when we return. Napoleon Wildcats able to snap a three-game losing streak. They've come to Archibald, claimed a 71-61 win over the Archibald the Blue Streaks. A big part of that was the young man down with our Miles Holiday who played most of the night above the rim, and that is Caden Cruz. <laughs> yeah, Caden Cruz, 19 points tonight. Uh, heck of a win for you guys. This was a real physical battle. How were you guys able to get the win? Uh, we just knew we had to lock down two and uh, five, uh, Brenner and Seiler. And if we knew if we, could do, if we could do that, then we knew that we would have a chance to win this game. We knew Brenner is probably their best player and one guy that could beat us. So that was our biggest goal, and we, I think we did that a little bit. Now, Cade Brenner, you talk about him. What a fantastic player. What is it about his game that scared you guys? He's just a three-level scorer, so he could do everything. We just knew we needed to lock him down and not let him get any easy buckets. Yeah, special uh, easy buckets. You had three easy buckets, uh, a th triple helping of Dunkalicious. You broke out all kinds of dunks today. How confident are you on breakaways that you're going to hammer it down? Uh, I'm pretty confident. I've 
I have a lot this year, a lot of good dunks, so I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna able to dunk each one. You guys have struggled lately, lost your last three, seven to last nine. How important is it to get this win tonight moving into sectional play? Oh, uh, this win is big because we knew that coming off all those losses, we needed a change. We just got a, a, a speech today by an ex-coach, and that helped us a lot. We need to uh, sprint to the finish line and not walk. Congratulations on a win. Normally, half-court shot, but we're going to let you do what you do best. How about you dunk on that rim right there? Here he goes. A fourth helping of Dunkalicious. Oh! Yes, indeed! Randy, how special is that young man? What a night tonight again. Played most of the night above the rim, and good finish for him as the Wildcats, as Miles had said, trying to get into form with a big win. Now he'll be congratulated by his teammates as they head back to the locker room. So the Napoleon Wildcats come away here with a big win, 71-61. We want to thank everyone for making our night here in Blue Street Country possible. Starts with... Alan Gladio, the uh, AD here at Archville. Of course, we can't thank uh, Curtis enough for his work behind the camera tonight. And, of course, our director, Mr. Ken Reeker. So 71-61, our final. Napoleon gets the win over Archibald for my partner, Miles Holiday, and our entire WOSN crew. I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching live high school basketball here on WOSN.